Hey everyone, I'm so sorry that you had to wait so long for the conclusion of that hunt, but in real life, I had to do the same thing. I had to come home and toss and turn and think about whether I made a good shot or not. And uh, so I put you guys through it also. I'm sorry about that. But that's how it feels when you're wondering what's going on and what happened. So now, the second part, the conclusion of the hunting simulation story time, the buck stops here. Part two. Enjoy. I said I'm going to go back up in the morning. I was already, I already had the time off in the morning to, to hunt. So I came up and I hunted first thing in the morning. Uh, I wasn't going to go tracking him right away, and I thought, why waste the time? I had a chance at a, a big doe, but I didn't want to shoot her and have two deer that I was trying to blood trail up here. Uh, it wasn't the, I mean, if it was a 20 yard chip shot, I would have taken it. Uh, I didn't take that shot on that doe because it wasn't the greatest, uh, it wasn't a chip shot, wasn't perfect. And I don't want to have two blood trails that I was trailing. So I let her go and decided it was time to come down here and start trailing. I had called that night I got a hold of deer search, left a message, and then uh, to one of them, he said, call this other county, because that's my this area, and then I called that person, they said, call this other person, I called that one and left a message. And I knew the guys were busy, and uh, you know, I thought, I probably can find it. Well, I was up here trailing, and the gentleman called me and said, hey, I'm in the area, I'm working on another track, if you still need me, call me back by this time and I can come. So I said, okay, I'm going to keep working on him. So the buck takes me down into some thick stuff and I get down there and uh, I'm still putting up the toilet paper. I told him I had it marked out with toilet paper. He said, that's awesome. That's exactly what you need to do. Try not to walk in the, the blood areas too much because it can throw the dog off. So, um, I got down there, I got to a certain location, and the blood trail went dry for a little while. Down on hands and knees, following tracks, thinking maybe it went that way, maybe it went that way, follow this trail over to nothing, then move this way, then find a speck. I'm like, okay, then I put a piece of paper, toilet paper, and then do it again and then again. And I was taking quite a while, I was getting frustrated. Not a, you know, the, the, the situation a little bit, not the deer, but at myself, like, man, you should have made a better shot. Not, I mean, when the arrow released, it was a good shot when he turned like he did. Just, anyway, it's frustrating. And if you've been in the situation, you know. So, I'm going to walk down here to show you where I was towards the end of the track. And uh, to let you know what happened. He came running down, jumped the bank hits the road, and he works his way right down through this edge of the gully. And there's a bunch of berry briars over there, and it was pretty thick at that time. Right now, it doesn't look it. And if you look down in the bottom of the gully over here, down over, let me see, right there, where it goes, man, it's all trees and nasty. And But he stayed right, right hugging this bank right along here for a ways. And I got to a spot and I lost him. So I worked it for a little while longer and uh, you know, the people that usually can help, I'll go help guys trail deer. They'll help me trail deer. Just easier with a couple set of eyes. And uh, they were working or had other things going on and that's understandable, everybody's got a life and uh, you can't always be there to track for someone but it sure is helpful. And I called them and just told them, hey, if you get a chance to, this is where I'm at, I'm getting frustrated. I was praying about it, like, Lord, help me find this deer. You know, I, I don't want it to go to waste. I don't want coyotes eating it. I don't want uh, it still wounded and suffering. I want to put it down so it's out of misery. Um, and if it was his will that he would help me locate this deer. But I don't want to give up. And uh, so I was down in all that thick stuff, right? 
coming across this side here. Um, and then finally, I found some more. And it dropped down in. So that's where I headed, down in the thick. So let's get down there. I get down into the gully, and I'll show you there's a trail, pretty heavy trail coming down across this little spot and up over this spot. And I see the blood trail comes down, and then boom, it's like right here in this stuff here. There's blood, there's blood over there. So then it doesn't go any farther that I can tell. And then there's some up the bank and there's some over there. And not to get like too deep into it, but I could see also some coyote tracks, so I'm freaking out about that a little bit. And I just, I work my way up there and circle around, can't find any. I work my way up and circle around, thinking maybe he went back up. I work my way down through here. I can't find, I can't figure it out. It looks like he went that way, up the hill, right? But it also looks like he was here, like it looked like a bed was here. And it was, I mean, not like a terrible scene, but there was some here, there was some there, there was some here. Like, thought maybe he ran down the hill and, like, crashed into here. And then stayed there for a bit and then tried to get up. Anyways, if you get sad thinking about it, you don't want him to be like that. But it all happened in a real quick amount of time, I believe, because he was running all the way down to here. So, I just thought it took him a while, you know? I searched here for about a half hour and I kind of, um, I, we work on Saturdays sometimes, uh, everybody in the company that I work for works on sat one Saturday a month usually. And it was my Saturday, but Joy took the morning for me and, uh, that was really awesome of her. But she called me and said, Hey, are you going to drive this, the afternoon still? Cause we had to return the person. And, uh, so I told her, you know, I'm really still trying to find this deer. I don't want to give up on it, but I will come home and I'll come back after. Um, it was starting to warm up. I didn't want the, the meat to go bad. I was really positive that it was had expired already. The deer uh, wasn't still suffering, but you don't know until you finish the job, you know, until you track them all the way to the end and know that it's, that it's over. Uh, so... She's like, well, just keep doing it. And I said, no, I'm coming home. I'm frustrated. I'm not getting anywhere. And uh, I said, just, you know, pray about it. I texted a bunch of people. said, you pray about this. Maybe you guys think it's a weird thing to pray about. But like I said before in other videos, that's a, a life that I'm responsible that I, I, I'm taking that. And it's given its life up for me and my family. And I don't take that lightly. Uh, I'm not just a... If you don't find it right away, go shoot a different one. I, I'm not like that. So, so I was on the search, but I was really, like my heart was hurting. I, I felt like I let that deer down. So kind of frustrated and I made my way up out of the gully. Like I said, I was getting frustrated. So I headed up out of the gully. And here's that trail that it is being used right now even. A nice trail comes across and right up the other side just along this piece here and right up over so try not to spin too much make sick but I head up the gully and I kind of not really throwing in the towel but I'm like man I don't know I'm thinking maybe did he try to go down through that thick stuff did he come up the hill? And so I started going down the hill, kind of resetting my mind, trying to think all the different possibilities, keeping an eye out for blood, looking for kicked up leaves, and uh, thinking, all right, I got to get down. I started on that side of that gully where I walked up through. And that you saw the road that we saw the trail going on. I was going to pop right up over there, but it was, I just, I wanted to walk this side because I felt like he came up here. And I was giving it, you know, a little bit more, going to head down, go drive, and then come back. And 
But the funny thing is, is like I felt like I needed to walk this way. And you guys might know what I'm meaning, but you know, sometimes you have just like a feeling that something is right or something isn't right. And I believe uh, God said, hey, walk this way. I never, never walk out of the woods on um, this way if I'm parked over there. Sometimes I'm parked on the other side over here and I'll walk down the main road through the woods, the old logging trail. But for some reason, like I said, I felt like I should walk this way, covering some ground that I haven't covered. A lot of times deer head downhill, you know, just those kind of feelings and I'm looking down in the gully once in a while, but not much because I'm on this logging trail and just kind of keeping an eye out, seeing if it came up through or was walking this trail. A lot of times they're gonna walk an easier path to get out, right? So I get down over here and I'm trying to decide if I'm gonna cut down to the cut down to the trail, the main road, and then come down and cross the gully low, or if I'm gonna cross the gully a little bit higher, right? And my phone rings, I pick it up, and uh, I'll get down here just a little bit farther, and uh, give you the, give you the play-by-play. -play. Hello? Hey man, what's going on? Yeah, I'm, I don't know, I'm headed down the hill super frustrated there's been I don't know I just you know, I'm walking down this way I never come this way and uh, yeah I'm just dropping off the hill behind your house and kind of watching the gully I just don't I have no idea where he went I lost sign of him and you know I just been praying oh Lord show me this deer I don't want to lose it yeah I know I mean I, I know we'll find it yep I know I know hey it's right, he's right there. No, I'm serious. I just found him. He's right in the bottom of the gully. Yeah, he's like right behind your house. Like I'm not going to have to hardly drag it at all. Yeah, it's just laying right there. Oh man. All right, yeah. Yeah, let's see. I'm going to, I'm going to run down there real quick. I'll tell you. Whoa. Okay. All right, yeah. You're going to be home soon? Okay, cool. Yeah. Oh yeah, you can help me drag it out of this little hole. It's going to be kind of thick. I'll, I'll have him ready to go. All right, sweet. Yes, yeah. Thank you, Jesus. All right, man. Thanks, buddy. Yeah. All right, cool. See you later. And that's how it went. I'm telling you, I walked down through here in a spot I, like, never walk, and hardly ever. I mean, like, there's no real reason for me to come over here, and it was laying right where I could see it. Like, if you look up through the rest of this stuff, it's dropped down real steep, and I was up... I was up over here, and you couldn't see down over. But once I crested this knob, you can see, and here is where it was. It was right on this flat spot next to the creek. And it was so awesome. So I called the deer search guy, and I was like, hey, man, don't worry about it. Uh, I found him, you know, and I sent him a picture. He was pretty excited. There's a trail right here that goes across. And so maybe he was trying to get down to that and across. I don't know, but he was right here. And that's where I located him. So that's where he was, right? I gotta tell you, I'm probably 150 yards from where I was shooting at that uh, 3D archery target. I mean, it was a little of a crappy drag. It's pretty rocky, uh, so the so it was hanging up on that stuff. But I drug him down through here and down through under those branches and stuff. I cleaned some areas out a little bit, got rid of some of the trees. And uh, down there is where I cut up in to head to my buddies. It's looking pretty up through there, isn't it? Love that water trickling. All right, so 
down through we went. Then I, uh, I kept him. I didn't field dress him yet until I got down. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Slippery. Until I got down to where I was just going to pull him up out. Because I didn't want any of this water getting in his chest cavity and uh, bacteria causing a problem with meat. So I brought it down through. Hey, luckily I've got some uh, Gore-Tex boots on. These things, some pretty nice boots. Uh, anyway, worked my way down through here. It's a little slippery. Ooh. Got to about this location and uh, field dressed him. And I was able to pop right up over this little knoll right here. And I'm on the trail right where we started. So where I drug him out of the gully, after I field dressed him, I was 40 yards from where I was shooting at the target. So that was a pretty easy, fairly easy drag out from a deer that I was pretty nervous I was gonna lose. And I took a spill, not in the gully just now, after I got out. Still pretty dry, it's pretty clean. My, my boots are a little muddy, I'm probably gonna go rinse them back off. Anyway, that's how the hunt went. And I'm very thankful for that deer. Hey, what'd you guys think? It all worked out in the end. We ended up finding that buck and uh, I'd given up. And sometimes we have to give up for it to work out. It's uh, pretty amazing when it works out that way. So here he is, all in his glory, nice European mount. Um, you know, I had a local guy, he has uh, flesh-eating beetles. I've boiled these heads before, and it's a pain. And Joy's not a big fan of me scraping the brains out of the hole in the back in the sink. <laughs> yeah, that's not a good night. So, I found a gentleman, and that's what he does. He has beetles that will eat all the meat off of this thing. It'll be down to just the bone, and then he washes it with soapy water and put some uh, some bleach on it or whatever and whitens it up. Looks pretty good. So I have a, a ending video that I did yesterday in the vehicle, but there's a couple things that I forgot to say. Um, you know, I really searched for that, uh, that arrow for a long time. And what I was saying yesterday is you want to find your arrow so you can look, if you look at the blood on the arrow, sometimes it'll tell you a lot. Or if there isn't a much much blood, but it smells funny, then you know you went through the guts. If you've got bubbles on the, the arrow, it means you got in the lungs. So it's part of the, uh, I guess, investigative tools that you can, it's like CSI uh, white tails. Anyways, so I wanted to find that arrow. Well, at the end, when I was field dressing him out, I was being real careful because there was no exit wound. And so when he turned the way he did and it hit kind of high because he ducked at the same time, kind of high and back because the way he turned, it went in and I think it might have hit a rib and it caused it to go right towards the back. So it, it went through, it hit a lung, hit liver, then it went through his stomach and uh, was kind of like in his back leg a little bit. And that whole arrow was all the way inside the deer. So that's why I couldn't find the arrow. I didn't find a piece of it the whole time. The whole thing was inside him. So that was the first thing. The second thing is, you can see that shot. It's high and back. Um, now it did, went in high, but I was shooting kind of downhill. So it kind of went in high and it dropped down as it went through. So it did catch some vitals. So that was good. Uh, I'm trying to think of anything else that really stuck out that I thought you, you might be wondering. Um, the, there was uh, no waste to any of the meat. Everything went well with that. And like I said, it was a super easy short drag because it was just a little bit uh, behind my buddy's house. So um, yeah, he's not huge, but he met my, uh, my personal 
antler restrictions. Uh, eight points or bigger, and he was just just to the edge of his ears. Uh, again, um, this deer, I shot him um, October 19th. And I had a lot going on uh, that I needed to get done in the fall. That's the way it is. Firewood and a bunch of other things and getting ready for um, taking other people out hunting. So he fit the bill. And I was definitely grateful and thankful for the blessing that he was for our family. So that's the tonight's ending clip. But you'll see last night's clip that I made for you yesterday in my vehicle that's coming up next. And there might be some outtakes afterwards. Hey, let me know what you think um, down in the uh, comments and maybe a like button, maybe a subscription if you haven't yet. Uh, we're just really trying to do our best to um, put some content out there that people will enjoy. Everything's a little different. Uh, we have hunting, we had fishing, we've had some indoor, like, uh, you know, kitchen stuff with Joy, um, bees. There's going to be some gardening this summer. Just a little bit of everything. Um, just the things that we normally do. So it's kind of a, an eclectic mix, maybe, but it all ties together kind of like a semi self sufficient, um, not quite, you know, back to the back in the day when we're on our own farm or whatever I mean a lot of people are pretty amazing with the things that they do um, but like a homesteading type of thing but we do a little bit of everything and uh, try to we'll try to bring you guys into it as we go that's it for the second hunting simulation uh, it was fun going back through and remembering how that hunt went it wasn't fun about the roller coaster ride of thinking that was a really good shot, then thinking that was a terrible shot, then having to sleep on it, then going out in the morning and losing. Oh, man. But, man, the the feeling of thankfulness and the just excitement of finding, walking right up on that deer when I had pretty much given up. And uh, I was just so thankful that it had uh, didn't suffer long. It was it had been there all night long in that spot, uh, and I I walked the night before when I left. I was on the other side of the gully and walked right past it and uh, didn't know it was there. I couldn't see it from that side, but I was so glad to find it. Uh, hopefully, you guys enjoyed that walk. Uh, Love getting out in the woods. You might know that by now. I've been out a few times on video. Uh, and I've had people tell me that they enjoy getting out in the woods with me, uh, even if it's through video. It is uh, something that I enjoy doing, so if you guys like it, leave a comment down below. If you have any questions about the hunt or any things that could maybe help strategy-wise or help uh, tracking-wise or all those things, I'm, I'm game. Send me some information, uh, give me, leave me a little comment, and uh, I'll be... Happy to reply to it as well. I'm going to head to the house and work on editing this video and get some family time in and hope to be done before midnight. Man, I've been doing a lot of late nights lately. All of us have. The school being out and um, the routine being off and, uh, and doing work and doing the videos and just it's been different. And I'm sure everybody's struggling with different aspects of that trying to stay on a, on a specific schedule, trying to have things feel normal when they're not normal. Um, if, you're, if you're struggling with anything, give some people a call. Tell them that you're having some issues. Uh, your friends and family and people, uh, they love you and they would love to, uh, you know, let, let you let it all out. Chew their ear for a while. Um, definitely... A good thing to be able to uh, have somebody to to be able to talk to especially in this situation now um, hopefully people are able to you know keep their cupboards stocked and and things if you know I saw something on Facebook the other day a, a person that we we know really well that said hey don't be proud if you're hungry 
call me. And uh, that's, uh, that's our feeling as well. You know, we're always willing to, to help somebody out if we can. And I'm sure most of you guys are too. You know, nobody wants to know somebody that's uh, going without. We're not in that stage of, of this right now. People, people have, and you know, people have been hoarding and stocking up. A person I drive the other day told me that uh, somebody he knows is looking to buy a freezer because they were, not because they're hoarding, they're getting a half a half a beef. It's something that they usually do, but they needed a freezer because the other one was bad or something. And they've called around and most of the places that are considered essential and still open are out of freezers. They have none. Even places they were looking to order them. Well, that tells you something. I mean, people are trying to be prepared for the worst, but we uh, think we're going to see that we're going to come out of this. And uh, so I just, uh, I pray for you, everybody, you know, emotionally, mentally, spiritually, physically, all of these different ways um, that we could be in a good spot. Um, so just pray that everybody's taking care of themselves. Everybody stays healthy. Do the right things. Listen to what they're saying that we need to do. Um, social distancing. You know, I dropped off honey in a mailbox. I dropped honey off on a porch and, uh, and things like that. Just because, you know, I gave somebody a, a elbow five that came by the house, told him, Hey, I'd like to give you a hug. I haven't seen him in a while. And, uh, he's like, how about, how about some elbow? So <laughs> we got some elbow love, but Hey, do the right things. All right, everybody. Thanks a lot for watching and uh, hiking the hill with me and, and recovering that buck. Uh, it's always nice to have somebody in the woods with you when you go. Um, nice to hunt together. And uh, so God bless you all. And uh, we love you. And I'll see you on the next one. Have a great night. Bye. Hey, everyone. Sorry I had to wait so long for the... What hey everyone, I'm sorry I had to wait so long, a whole day, to see the conclusion of that hunt. But that's how it worked out for me too. I had to sleep over night uh, trying to think just what you've all been waiting for. Part two of story time. The buck stops here. The hunting. What's it called? Oh. Right here. And I'm on the trail. Right where we started. Let's see. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> That's a good one. <laughs> Six, seven, eight. All right.